Let's think about the kind of graphs we're likely to encounter in applications. Let me give an example. So suppose that Brian's car gets 17 miles per gallon and he starts a trip with 12 gallons in the gas tank. Our independent variable will be d, the distance Brian drove. Our dependent variable will be g, the amount of gas in Brian's car. Making a table for the story, when he hasn't driven at all, he has 12 gallons of gas. And then every time he drives another 17 miles, the amount of gas goes down by 1. So when he's driven 17 miles, he has 11 gallons of gas. When he's driven 34 miles, he has 10 gallons of gas, and so on. This gives us the equation, dependent variable amount of gas, equals change in g over change in d, so negative 1 seventeenth d plus starting value, value of g when d is 0, plus 12. Now say we want to graph this. Well, okay. Notice that the values of d that we're going to be interested in get very big very fast. On the other hand, the only values of g that we're interested in are from 0 up to 12. And in this problem, are we interested in negative values of d at all? No. We don't care about negative values of d either. Okay, so what does that tell us about our graph? Oh, the first question we need to ask is, which axis is going to be horizontal? And the answer is, the D axis will be horizontal. The horizontal axis is always going to be the independent variable. Independent variable is always the left column in the table. It's always the horizontal axis on the graph. It's always the first number in an ordered pair. Sometimes you have to pick, but by drawing it on the horizontal axis, you're saying, this is my independent variable. Okay. Next, we aren't interested in negative values of either variable, so we're only going to show positive values. Now that won't always be the case. Sometimes we'll have situations where negative numbers do make sense for one or both of the variables, but not in this example. And then the last thing we're going to decide to do is we're going to count the d-axis by 17s. Why by 17s? Well, because then we get nice points. Right? Well, every time d goes up by 17, g goes down by 1. We'll be able to plot nice points if we count by 17s on the d-axis. But, you know, 17 is a lot bigger than 1. And to give some of that appearance, I'm going to skip two squares every 17. So here's what my graph is going to look like. Again, this is the graph of g equals negative 1 17th d plus 12. So there are my axes. Notice that this graph came out pretty big. If I wanted to make this a little bit smaller, I might count by twos on the g-axis. And then... Uh, only skip one every 17 on the d-axis. Okay, but now I plot my intercept. And I want to go right 17, down 1. Notice I didn't go right 17 by counting out 17 squares. I went right 17 by increasing the label on the d-axis by 17.
down one, my g-axis actually counts by one, so I'm okay there. Okay, so that's going to be my line. Notice with the d-axis I drew, my line doesn't make it quite all the way down there. That's okay. Brian's probably not going to drive until he runs out of gas anyway. But here's my graph for this equation, which in turn describes the amount of gas Brian has in terms of the distance that he drives. This is reasonable. The further he drives, the less gas he has.